Steve Vinson here. Uh, we're back in the workshop today. We're going to do a mini bike stretch. We're going to put eight inches into this little doodle bug. The guy that owns it, he's a regular sized human being and the doodle bug is just a little too small. So we're going to stretch it out. So the doodle bug frames are seven eighths inch tubing. So this is seven eighths inch DOM. This is 1, 0.120. I think 0.095 is a little thinner and would be a little easier. This is heavy duty. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to sleeve this with some 5 eighths inch. The problem with the 0 .10, 0 .120 is the 5 eighths inch doesn't really fit. So I had to grind the heck out of the, <laughs> this 5 eighths inch DOM to get it to fit. So it fits in there now, but I had to take the flapper disc to it to grind it down. The last one I did, I think it must have been an 095. I have a piece left over. It's a little bit thinner, which is fine because you're going to sleeve it with this material. But this is a snug fit. I mean, it's got a really nice, really nice friction fit. So what we're doing is an 8 inch, 7 eighths inch piece, a 10 inch piece that is 5 eighths inch, sleeve that in there and when we cut the bike in, into pieces, one inch will go into the, to the frame, we'll drill a hole in the frame so that'll be welded right there and of course it's going to get welded around where we're going to cut it. So I'm going to show you where we're going to cut it now. Uh, before I've done all this, kind of getting things ready. So this is all pre-cut, ready to go, um, took some careful measurements um, for where we're going to make the cuts, where the motor is positioned, where the chain tensioner is positioned, and also where the seat brackets are going to go. So we measured all of those relative to the table when we set the frame on the table. So um, it's all designed so that when I put it back together, the seat fits, the motor goes back in square and true so the chain doesn't jump off and the chain tensioner ends up in the right spot. So uh, we'll get started. Um, I've already marked on the frame where the cuts are going to go. So they're the same size, same distance. I put the frame up like this on the table and measured from the table floor up. This one I think is 14 inches. And then when I did the same thing back here, also this one over here is nine and three quarters. So the back one is nine and three quarters. The front one, because of the handle back here, um, it's easier just to sit on the table like this is roughly 14 inches from the table to where the cut is going to be. So I have them staggered. Um, the important thing when you're making the cut is you want to find a piece of the, of the frame that's straight because this thing has a bend right about here. And down here there's a subtle bend right about where the chain tensioner is. So it starts to bend forward and you want to do it where it's straight. And the reason for that is when we slide this in and the other frame comes in, you want it to be in a, in a part of the frame that's straight still. Let all that curving part happen in the front because the motor is going to get moved back relative to the mount. So uh, when I cut it here, what's going to happen? This is going to go here, and the next weld is going to be this piece is going to be way over here. So the motor is going to be way too far for us. So this is going to get cut loose and brought back and mounted basically right onto that, right about right there. So the motor is going to stay in the same position relative to the back of the frame and the axle. And that's important so your chain doesn't get too long. Uh, that can create all kinds of problems for the mini bike. Um, while we're at it, we're going to replace this motor plate because if you see there's a giant, I'm going to stick my fingers in these holes. There's a giant hole in this motor plate. Uh, somebody got a little overzealous with their drill. And then this bar is bent. So we're going to cut that off and put a new bar on there, <coughs> which I already have. So as we go along, I'm also going to build a little jig. To keep everything straight, I bought a piece of inch by, one inch by one inch angle. And what this is going to do is when I, I'm going to cut this into pieces, but it's going to go against the frame. So you can clamp that in and clamp this piece to it so it keeps it nice and straight. The first two mini bikes I stretched, I didn't have that. I just used clamps and eyeballed it and it was really, really hard to keep it all straight. So it's important. <laughs> that was too tall for the video. Okay, so. Got the frame cut in half, um, four pieces are here. Uh, I was working on my little fixture. This is gonna work great. So I just cut that piece of uh, one inch by one inch angle iron in half, so it's two 18 inch pieces now. Put it under the frame and slide the part in. Perfect, put a couple clamps on it. Um, I'll probably use a, a channel lock when I actually roll it, but this is just for lock up purposes. So a couple clamps on your side. Same thing over here, we're going to clamp, we're going to slide it forward a little bit so that the front of the frame will touch it. So I'm just showing you this because I'm going to weld this next and I'm not going to videotape the welding. So if 
you need to know how to weld, you're watching the wrong video. So, uh, frame, what I'm gonna weld is I'm gonna put this fixture completely together like this so that it's a little bit bowed here. There's a little bit of tension in the front of the frame. So I'm gonna put that together. Um, this will get clamped here and here, and both sides here. And that'll make it nice and straight. That's gonna be really, really good. Um, of course, the same thing will be done on the top. Uh, once the bottom is installed, we'll put the top piece in. Uh, there's a little bit of a rock that has to happen. So before, when I weld it, this will all be kind of set in place so that it doesn't get welded with any spring in it. So it's got the right orientation, basically. So that this is in here, and then I'll, I'll put the fixture up here to weld the top also, clamp it all together. Um, it's gonna work out pretty good. Sorry, I'm a little tall for <laughs> I'm not a professional YouTuber, in case you haven't noticed. Um, just sharing what I know about stretching. The mini bike frame, I've had a few guys ask me about it, so that's the purpose of making the video. So uh, I'll get a little more work done and check in. I'm not sure if I'll finish it tonight. I might uh, postpone the welding until tomorrow afternoon. But uh, more in a bit. All right, so there's one more thing I decided to do. Um, originally, I was going to drill a little hole in each of the frame in all eight spots uh, so that I could weld or drill a, maybe a half inch hole so I could weld through the frame and catch the 5 8 inch tubing. I drilled a few holes and I realized why not I just notch it. So I just notched it with a grinder, a uh, four and a half inch cutoff wheel with a metal cutting blade. Notched it and now I can put a nice thicker bead in there. It doesn't have to be real precise or anything, just enough to catch that metal um, so that it secures it um, the idea is this thing's, you know, mini bikes take a lot of fatigue. You know, you're bouncing around, they take a lot of vibration. Um, I was worried that just putting a bead around here may not be strong enough, so we put a notch in the in here, which will weld into here. That'll give it strength through that 5 8 inch uh, brace, basically, or, or splint. Anyway, the idea is we'll just to strengthen the weld. Make sure you don't get a failure at the joint where we're uh, cutting this thing into four places, or basically there's going to be, you know, eight separate welds that we're going to do. Um, so more on that later. Okay, so we got the frame mocked up, ready to weld. So you can see there's a angle iron on the outside there, clamping everything together. These joints are nice and smooth and straight. So I'm going to put a couple tacks here, here, on this side here and here. And then once those are tacked, we'll move the brackets up to the top and do the same thing up here, bring this together and uh, make that nice and snug. So once those are tacked, then we'll finish weld them. So uh, that's what we're gonna do next. Oh, here, here's a welder I've got, just in case you're curious what kind of welder I'm using. It's an Eastwood MiG-175. Um, this does require a 220 outlet, so I've got a rigged up kind of extension cord that plugs into the dryer here at the house. So anyway, we'll get to welding on this thing. And another trick I found, buy a decent welding hood. Uh, I bought the cheapy Home Harbor Freight one. And I just couldn't see. This one makes a world of difference. I can see it really good. Here's the outside of the box. Got this at the welding shop. It was not that expensive, about 65 bucks, um, I think is what it cost. And uh, it really makes a big difference in welding. So if you're welding for the first time or you're new to welding, uh, spend a few dollars extra and get a, a better hood. It's a lesson learned. I had a lot of terrible welds <laughs> on my first couple projects, but it's uh, getting better every time. Okay, so flash forward, the welding's done. I've already s sanded down the outside edges. So kind of the areas that show, you want to grind those down, you know, fairly flat so you don't see those big giant welds. Uh, the back sides that are hidden by the seat, places like this, you can leave a little thicker. You don't have to, you can clean them up a little bit like I did there, but they don't have to be super clean. Um, these right here, the front ones, the new motor plate's gonna get mounted basically right over that. So you're not really gonna see the back side. So I'm gonna put a little more weld on that. There's a little bit of a low spot. A um, couple of the little things to clean up. I cleaned this up a little bit. Um, so it looks pretty good. I think that, I mean, that makes the frame a lot bigger. Once I move the motor plate back, uh, it's going to be basically right about here, about, you know, eight inches back from where it was. That'll leave a big void up front. Now some guys have put battery mounts there or a little flat spot. You can, I don't know, if you're traveling with your mini bike, you can mount something there. Uh, so the next step is we're going to cut this off, move it back. Um, the chain, chain, chain tensioner. And then we're going to make a new mount for the seat because this is going to be too short. So the seat mount is going to be back here and we'll weld that and drill a hole 
so this will get cut off and removed. And then the next thing would be to cut this off and this is going to get thrown away and replaced. So this is going to replace, that's going to be replaced because it's bent. And we're going to fix this. You can see that thing sits way forward. So we're going to put a little weld right on the end of that piece of metal so that when it comes back, it comes back pretty much flush. The owner asked me to do that for him so it would look a little straighter. Anyway, so that's in the next installment. Okay, so we got it pretty well finished up. Uh, this is where we cut off the old motor plate. You can see how big these holes were. This bent piece, we cut that off and put on new parts. Um, came out pretty well. Uh, the new motor plate is going to make a huge difference. It's going to make the motor uh, a lot more stable. Um, we talked about moving the foot pegs forward, but the owner decided to keep them right where they are uh, in relation to the motor. So it's something we could change later if you really wanted to, but uh, it's pretty well done. I finished up all the welding, got all the mounts done. I'll show you what that looks like right now. Okay, so here's the welded frame all put together. Uh, the new motor plate is on and positioned. I put the motor in it with the rear wheel just to make sure that the chain would line up. And uh, the chain tensioner has been relocated. There's a 5 8 new pipe down here. Mouse motor plate, new 3 quarter inch or 7 8 inch rather pipe here for the foot pegs. We fix this, put a little weld right on the end there. That makes it line up a little bit better now and we put the new seat mount on so it's a slightly bigger piece of metal that's what i happen to have in stock here at the shop and uh, the old one was mounted up here we cut it off so moved it back so the seat will mount right back in place so there it is that's an eight inch stretch on a doodle bug dbs db30s if you have any questions on this or what what, what happened here i kind of skipped over a few things but i kind of i think i caught the main parts um if there's something i missed or that i neglected to mention Feel free to ask questions in the comments. If you like the video, subscribe. I've got a couple of the mini bike videos, the cycle cart videos. And uh, thanks to Dallas and Jason from the Mini Bike Riders, AZ Mini Bike Riders on Facebook. Helped me out with a couple questions. Anyway, hope uh, you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Have a great day.